And I'm not going to tell you that I'm any better an economist than anybody else. I might be harder working. I'm not going to claim I'm any smarter than an economist. And there were some, we were talking to uh, some people about Benny Tull, who I know is very well known here. He's a friend of mine. Uh, there's lots of great economists. But it's what you choose to read and believe. This book here, and I urge everybody, if you want to get a knowledge as to what sort of business cycle this was, Charles Kindleberger, famous professor from the University of Chicago, Mania's Panics and Crashes. That was a book I kept on my night table, uh, much to my wife's chagrin, but we can talk more about that later. Uh, what else? What else got me through? Yogi Berra. You know who Yogi Berra is? Famous New York Yankee, no? The 19th century. Now I'm showing you how old I really am. Uh, I only watched the rerun. Yogi Berra is a famous New York Yankee. Played in the 50s and 60s. He was a catcher. Uh, he threw up the ceremonial first pitch in the World Series. We're all Yankee fans in our family. Uh, and so I uh, went through this exercise uh, where, you know, I, I, always knew, I always knew that Yogi Berra had these great, these great sayings. You know, these great sayings. He's hilarious. There's books that he's written. He's like an idiot savant. It's like, uh, and, so, and so we're going through it, and I'm thinking with Yogi Berra, everything he does, and even my middle son Jacob will tell you, Daddy, he sounds just like you. I don't want to make the wrong mistake. I never said most of the things I said. <laughs> Days are full of over yet. But the best one, it's tough making predictions, especially about the future. You don't get a degree in strategy, you get a degree in economics. The strategy you pick up when you're on Wall Street, or you're on Bay Street, or you're on Montgomery Street, uh, or whatever street that you're on. And I got a chance to know Bob Farrell. And he sent me this report that he did back in the 70s. And it was about Bob Farrell's 10 market rules to remember. This is the 10 commandments for investing, right here. And I made sure, I made sure that when I went to New York in 2002, I made sure that every salesperson, every trader, had this piece of paper pasted on their Bloomberg machine. Okay, this is not the rules to live by, this is the rules to invest by. And you read it, I wrote a whole report on this, just the year before I left Merrill. Uh, it was called An Economist Interpretation of Bob Farrell's 10 Market Rules to Remember. If you want this, I'm happy to send it to you. And it seems like it's, it's obvious, it's not so obvious, you need a little bit of rushy interpretation. <laughs> Markets tend to return to the mean over time, all these, all these things, all these things. Number eight. Bear markets have three stages. Sharp down, reflective rebound, and then the long and drawn out decline to the fundamental low. So, when you're asking David Rosenberg, what do you make of this rally in the market since the March lows and the stock market? Yeah, my answer is reflective rebound, caveat emptor. So, Dave Rosenberg is always here, consensus is there. No, the reality is this. And it's true whether you're a portfolio manager uh, or whether you're an, an, an analyst, you're a trader, you're an economist, a strategist, uh, you have to sometimes have conviction in your calls. The market is not always right. The market is, how arrogant is that? You know what, the market is not always right. Sure. And sometimes you have to have the conviction of your calls if you do your homework to be able to make a call. And actually, what you're going to find historically is that 20% of the time, the consensus is right, and 80% of the time, it's wrong. So it's very true, I imagine, even in the sciences, right? We're always finding out the different theories are wrong. Look how we found out about Einstein or about Darwin, but even economics. Now, let's get into what's happened currently. What are these bars? These bars show you what the stock market did, the S&P 100, all the way back to 20. From the bottom of the stock market to the time that the recession ended. You know what I'm saying? Stock market supposedly is the leading indicator. Stock market bottoms, and then the economy bottoms. Usually three to six months later. But they call the stock market a leading indicator, a discounting mechanism. So stock market bottoms and the economy bottoms. And what I did, just historically, is I went back and I said, okay, please tell me, tell me from the time that the stock market bottoms so the time the recession ends, in that three, six month interval, what does the stock market normally do? Let's talk about what's normal, so then we can identify what's abnormal. Well, this is what's normal. And this is today. 
So let's be charitable and assume that all the economists are right. All the economists are right. The recession ended sometime in, say, July, August. But let's assume that they're right. Everybody seems to believe that, which is why maybe I don't. <laughs> Market's up 64%. We've never seen that before. Usually, the norm, average, the mean, you're up 20%. We're up 64% from the time the stock market bottomed in March till the time that everybody thinks the recession ended in June or July. Usually by the time we're up 64% coming rain, you're in the third year of the recovery. Third year. You're not debating what month the recession ended. So the point I'm making is that the stock market has gotten way ahead of itself. So, uh, what made my work special, I think, and why people want to hire me, beyond the fact that I'm just a really nice guy, uh, is the fact that it's about being relevant. You know, I'm sure there's different economists in here, and I think even in engineering, you have to take an economics degree, my heart goes out to you, you have to get an economics course, my heart goes out to you. But uh, what is important is to be relevant. If you're going to be an economist on Wall Street or Bay Street, you're going to be a financial economist. You have to be relevant to investors. You can be an economist at the Central Bank. You can be an economist at a university. You can be an economist at the conference board. You can be an, confidence, uh, a, a, an economist at an auto company, but be an industry economist. But what matters in my business is what does it mean for my name, for CASAP, right? What does it mean for my investors? about taking your money and putting it into a mattress. Because if you take your money and put it into a mattress, you don't know if your daughter is going to throw the mattress out. But over on top of that, over on top of that, corporate bond for the risk, a much better place to be. And I'm going to tell you right now, I, I don't have a lot of experience. So nobody has experience who's living today, not even Alan Greenspan, if he mattered predicting the economy in a post-bubble credit collapse. It was not a normal recession. We've had tremendous government intervention and incursion in the capital markets and the economy to save the system. So who knows about the future? Let's agree this was not a normal manufacturing inventory recession where low interest rates worked their magic. It wasn't just about interest rates. Look at the balance sheets of the central banks. Look at all the deficits around the world for the government to come in and dramatically save the private sector, especially the financial sector. What are these? GDP, unemployment, inflation. Again, these are all U.S. This is last month, the Federal Reserve of the United States released their forecast for the next three years. So these are the top 20 policymakers in the Fed will still save the most important economic body today. China's catching up. And what they, what they do is they give us the minimum and the maximum forecast on which it does as well. Look at this. One person's a 2.8, one person's a 5. That's a 2.2 percentage point difference and a $1.4 trillion economy. That's like $300 billion. That's not chump change. <laughs> Unemployment, look at this. One person, one person at the Fed thinks we're going to go back to full employment, 6%. And there's another person on the Fed that thinks we're going to have almost deflation. They can't even agree. They have no clue. They have no clue. If I have that much of an uncertain forecast, if there's such a wide interval, a wide band, and I will admit right now that there's more uncertainty now over the economic outlook and the financial market outlook than I can remember certainly in my 26 years in the business, you know what? I might just want to have a little cash on hand. I might want to have a few bonds in the portfolio.